Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock, Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and Connor. Hey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last show before the last show of the off season. That's crazy. Oh, next wow. week Good is All Star Weekend. So that means that next week yeah. we'll have at least some type of disc golf to I talk about. I can't think of a more important sporting event happening in the next few days than the All Star. Yeah, I agree. Event. I fully mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. Take it into our. <laughs> is that the same? No. Did they do it? They didn't do it the same weekend of. of Super Bowl this year. No. It's the week after because yeah. Super Bowl's this Sunday. Smart. I was trying to a lot of math going on my head during smart. that. Um, so we'll the have Super Bowl is this Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Dag on. We'll ready? have the All Star preview next week. Then we'll have the All Star recap the week after, and then we'll have the Chess dot com. I am so excited. The further I get into this job and like doing disc golf. The more the more my life calendar starts to revolve around the disc golf, like it's like it's like I'm being pulled into this orbit that is disc golf, and the more that that happens, the more I get so excited for disc golf season to start. It's here because there's just going to be us. information. And which we've been, we've been blessed with this off season. There's been fun stuff. To talk which about. also means, do we want to make next week's episode the first episode on YouTube on our our main YouTube channel? Maybe. The All Star preview, mm. or do you want to wait for the Chess dot com? Let's wait recap? for the Chess dot com or the All Star recap. Give me a little more. Let's get let's plan it out a little more than this. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> coming soon we to got a Grip Lock subs, YouTube though. channel near you. No, yeah. I'm not worried about It'll it. It'll do fine. You can check out the YouTube channel. You can see our reaction videos to a lot of stuff that's happening going on in the disc golf world. You can find our clips over there right now. And within the next few weeks, the start of the season. That is where the Grip Lock podcast will live. So if this is your favorite podcast, which it should be, thank you, um, and you want to stay tuned with it, you have to head over to Grip Lock. The link's in the description down below. That YouTube channel, subscribe there. And like I said, in a few weeks, the transition will happen to over there. But we got a little bit of off-season movement. Basically, the final move of the off-season has happened. Some breaking news in the disc golf world. We have an update on Rusco's Emporia Country Club plan. And then we're going to do our two early season predictions. Um, next week, we'll do our preseason power rankings where we rank, get our initial ranking going. But this se- this week, we're going to kind of just way too early try to predict what's going to happen this season. So a lot of fun stuff going on in today's episode. But first, quick word from our sponsor. It's time for the ultimate face-off. The Beard Bowl is here, and the two best teams square off to see who the champion of facial fuzz is. Our friends at Manscaped are prepping everything you need for game day. Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the MVP of facial grooming, offering offering precision trimming, water-resistant technology, and enough styling option to outplay any opponent. And guess what? You can join the winning team along with the 10 million men who already trust Manscaped with our special offer. You can go to manscaped.com and use code GRIPLOCKED for 20% off and free shipping. Craft your winning look with Manscaped. Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the ultimate franchise player to take your grooming game to the end zone. The package made it easier than ever to craft your signature look with ease. Featuring the Beard Hedger Cordless Trimmer, it packs one guard with 20 different links. That's right, no more messy drawers full of guard. That's game changing. But wait, there's more. The Beard Hedger is also water resistant. You can run under the sink and shave in the shower for easy cleanups. It's also time to move the sticks on your old beard razor. Look and feel ready for the big game every day with Manscaped's beard formulations, including the Beard Balm, Beard Oil, Shampoo, and Conditioner. And lastly, as a bonus, Manscaped's thrown in the Beard Accessory Pack, which has a beard brush, beard comb, and beard scissors for the finishing Ooh. touches every modern bearded gentleman deserves. The playoff beard has never looked looked better. Trust Manscaped to get the job done and get 20% off with free shipping with our code GRIPLOCK to Manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off free shipping at Manscaped.com with code GRIPLOCK. Gear up for the real halftime show where your beard takes center stage. Heck yeah. Use that stuff every day. Let's kick it off with a little Patreon question of the week. This one comes from Patreon.com slash Foundation Disc Golf, our Heiser Club. You can join over there and get in on the Heiser Club mailbag where you can ask us whatever you want and we answer every question however long it takes getting longer and longer because there's a lot more of you um, than there used to be but that's great this one actually came in too late so we didn't get to answer it during the mailbag but i figured what better spot to answer it than right here so smart uh michael Hanna, longtime patron hey michael um he asked when playing doubles what's your strategy when it comes to throwing order should the better slash more consistent player throw first or second well more consistent player if because it depends on the skill set because better player is not really necessary but if you are the more accurate, um, consistent thrower, it dep- a lot of it depends on distance. Because if you have somebody that throws far, but you're like the accurate guy, you want the accurate guy to go first um, to try and get in the fairway without the pressure. And then if he messes up, you have two shots of throwing the safe shot. 
Um, cause if you have the, the, the second guy go for it, go crazy, then you'll have one attempt at the shot. That yeah. Gets but you what if play. the first guy hits a tree and lands in the middle of the fairway? Then the second, then guy, the second guy, guy gets to go for it. Yeah. Right. But that's what I'm, no, I'm saying like, what if you're, what if you put the more aggressive guy who has the capability of throwing further? It's like the same with putting where you run the first shot because you there's a possibility a ends up safe. Right. But if you're, if your first guy, and so if he's consistent, then the, he might, then he would remain consistent. Like even typically your aggressive player is the better of the two players. Yeah. So you have the guy just, Hey, get me in the fairway. Go first. It, yeah, because it, then it your better player that. who has a super aggressive line, if they're good enough to attempt a super aggressive line, typically the shot to get you in the middle of the fairway, get you safe is right. the easier shot. Uh -huh. So yeah. if that's your dynamic, you have the worst of the two quote unquote, go first. So then the second guy either has do whatever you want. We're already safe. Right. Or, okay, let's make sure this is in balance. And it's you want the pressure to be on the better player. But if you're, closer to equal then it's just pick and choose based on the hole like i yeah. used to have basically the lefty version of myself except for he threw a lot farther than me as my doubles partner in college and so it was just like is this hole better for a lefty or righty to attack and we would just flip our order based on that right yeah it's it's very customizable based on your skill sets but the idea is my my best my favorite position to be in was the 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 first player however their skill set lined up was going to be trying to get us in play and if they got us in play second guy could go more aggressive if he didn't get us in play second guy tried to throw the same shot so however the skills line up for that in the case of me and my doubles partner it kind of depended on who was on that day um if i was throwing well i was gonna be the second guy because we just wanted to make sure my my partner got us in play and then i wanted to be able to attempt the second shot if it was the other way around we would flip it but um, whoever was better at that aggressive line, whoever had the better chance of getting that was going to go second for that reason. It's kind of the opposite of putting just because um, putting you and this is kind of the same with driving, but like putting is like the end of the hole. Whereas like driving, if you can't get off the tee, your hole, you're not making birdie at that point. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, your hole is drastically changed. So it's just, yeah, I don't know. There's yeah. a lot of schools of thought, though. I'm Brody more, disagrees with us on putting. Yeah, yeah, which well, doesn't make any sense. I don't think he actually sense. disagrees with us on putting. He just mm -hmm. like he doesn't understand there's limitation to our theory because like it, yeah, if we had a 50 mile an hour headwind, then yeah, you're gonna um, lay up. And there was a cliff behind it, then yes, the first person is going to lay up because we mm -hmm. want two attempts at a layup. Um, but most scenarios in disc golf, you're free to uh, you're pretty much a guarantee if the first guy runs it and it rolls away 20. Feet, if you're within feet, 70 feet and you can't get up and down, yeah, like, there's a problem. <laughs> like you should be good to go. So. Uh, now, off-season move, basically the only thing we were waiting on was what's going to happen with Chandler Kramer, and not oh really a surprise with how mm -hmm. long it took him to announce. Uh, he said, my 2024, my manufacturer 2024 sponsor is Nobody. After consi careful consideration this year, I'm going to open bag by choice and choosing to have no manufacturer sponsor. Um is that how you spell manufacturer? It is. I want to, it just looks like a weird word. It is a weird one. I want to get like back truer. to the, my roots and do things how I want to for a year simply by throwing what I want. Simply put, I'm doing this for me and my love for the game. For those that want to support me on tour, the best way you can do is checking out all the sponsors below, my in the bag, as well as my tour schedule will be coming out soon. To everyone who supported me at this point, it means way more than you know. Buckle up. It's going to be a fun year. I'd be interested in seeing his in the bag. Yeah, I will too. I like Chandler Kramer a lot. Pretty obvious what this post actually means, which is... I'm not getting sponsored because I didn't get a deal I liked. And yeah, I, but he said by choice, Trevor. Well, yeah. he did choose. Well, he did choose. I'm sure yeah. he got I offered bet, yeah, by say, a lot I, of companies. I would never say he didn't get deals because I'm sure he had offers. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm. he probably decided, like a lot of people have in the past, none of these are great enough to just have the exclusivity. I can do better taking little sponsors and taking a bunch of them. And, and mm -hmm. I respect that play completely. But it is a little like, well, he didn't lie. Never mind. I respect the whole thing. He didn't lie. He said it was his choice. It was his choice. So, yeah, you I have think Trevor's we saw this, respect. We you, saw this with I like Chandler um, Kramer, the Kramer dog. We saw this with Lisa Fakus too. Keep making those a borders, similar though. a similar thing <laughs> where like I would imagine he's not gonna have much Lone Star in his bag. No, probably not. Um, probably zero. Probably zero. Lone this is Star gonna be a good bag. test for our like open bag. Like what what would most pros carry? Because like I'm sure he's gonna have destroyers. Yeah, it's almost a guarantee. Well, I mean, you can look at most pros who are sponsored by like Infinite or whatever those companies yeah. are. That he's most gonna of them have, have destroyers. destroyers. Yeah. Well, he's a forehand guy. So what what other discs is like Chandler Kramer gonna be itching to carry? Big, I mean Sexton like loves Firebirds the, like probably X Cal Firebird, yeah. He'll yeah. probably love Firebird. Especially the forehand rollers with Firebird, dirty. Yeah. Dirty. Um, interesting. 
But yeah, we saw this with him and with Lisa Fakus, and I would imagine both of them were a similar thing where they were, they, whatever happened with Lone Star, something happened with Lone Star where maybe they didn't get the same deal they had before, maybe something was, a promise wasn't met, whatever. Something happened where they left Lone Star and then they go out into the disc golf world that is now post-COVID bubble. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for a deal that can allow them to tour and, you know, do things with a deal they probably signed during the COVID bubble and it just doesn't exist anymore. Right. And it's like, it, 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 who knows what type of like they might have been, they might be looking for a deal with a guarantee and just there was no guarantees out there. It might have just been deals with just bonus structure. And you're like, yeah, OK, so like I'm going to throw only x y or z company and the only way i get paid from them is if i win an a tier but i'm only playing pro tour events all year so cool. i'd have to basically come top 10 in a pro tour event to get a little bonus yeah that doesn't make sense he was getting a, he had to have a decent deal because he was getting discs yeah like with, tour series with hooligan and, and lone star like he was getting tour series now stuff, he so. is still with the disc barn which is the retail company that owns hooligan so oh, there could still be some he's not sponsored by hooligan supposed but there get, could still be some yeets or which the yeets just a warbird right yeah i'm supposed to get hooligan prototypes well, actually we don't soon. know if the yeets just a warbird because now they're gone from lone star yeah so the yeet was just out. a warbird but yeah. we don't know what we don't know what we're about to see from the hooligan yeet too mm. yeah we don't know what we're about to see from from hooligan but there you go chandler kramer has announced the other massive announcement that we didn't see coming that came out of this past week was the Disc Golf Pro Tour and UDisc have announced they are parting ways. So this is the Disc Golf Pro Tour announcement. They originally broke via UDisc's uh, Twitter. They put out a, a statement on Twitter, and then shortly thereafter, we got an email with a press release from the Pro Tour. That is what this is, basically. But the Pro Tour has announced a new score and stat platform powered by PDJ Live and Stat Mando. That's what they're going with here. Which, like really what we've learned is it's powered by PDJ Live. Stat Mando is going to provide stats and data. Yeah, well, Stat Mando, PDJ now owns Stat Mando. Yeah. They're just kind of throwing that in there, I think. They're for, trying to, there's, there's a, that's a name people like better. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the Pro Tour will transition to a new technology service provider for recording and displaying all live scores and competition statistics. Do you remember types to be, of these? Is this Charles that does these? I think so, Charles McCracken. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the soon to start 2024 season, the Pro Tour will now host all live scores and stats on DGPT.com thanks to a live data feed from the new and improved PDJ Live scoring platform provided by the Professional Disc Golf Association. The Pro Tour will work hand in hand with the PDJ technology team, which now includes a team from Stat Mando, the popular disc golf statistic platform that was recently acquired by the PDGA to develop new features, stats, and analytics for integration into DGPT scores and stats in Disc Golf Network live broadcasts. We are grateful for UDisc support and partnership as a as a team has grown from a small series of events to the official Pro Tour of the PDGA, says Jeff Springs. Uh, as the Pro Tour approaches its 10-year anniversary, we're thankful for the expertise and commitment to quality and accuracy UDisc has provided. Um, it's 10-year anniversary, 2015, 2025? 2026. 2026, yeah. 2016 is when the Pro Tour started, I do believe. Let me see. Not We're really approaching it. We are excited <laughs> for the possibility this new platform will bring, says Baker Helton, VP of Business Admin at the Pro Tour. Hosting our own scores and stats is the first step towards being able to use our data to farther fan engagement and reach new audiences. We'll be able to provide third-party access to our scores and statistics that can be used by sports news organizations or for gaming, such as fantasy and wagering. We are looking for, forward to our fans being able to interact with disc golf in new ways in the future. So, it's a doozy. Um, basic thoughts on this makes sense i mean eventually like it makes sense for the pro tour and slash pdga to I like do this in-house the juiciest detail that we don't know because like the strategy um like the end game like makes sense you want to have it in-house yeah the juiciest detail that we don't know is scenario a they wanted to buy out udisc and just bring them in like they have done with jomez and stat mando but they just operated at a net loss for the year. So Pro Tour or PDJ probably couldn't afford it, or you just turned it down. That's scenario A, so they wanted to buy them out or didn't. Scenario B, PDJ was like, well, we already have PDJ Live, and it's so great, so we don't want the UDisc platform. We're just going to do our own thing. Um, I'm just curious to know like where where it went. Like, Was there ever a thought of, like, we're going to just try to take UDisc because everybody loves UDisc? Um, or were they just like, no, we're just not even going to involve it at all. I would just be curious to know. My thought is, so the Jomez acquisition 
from what I understand, wasn't a like pro tour cut someone a huge check. No, there was there, there was probably debt. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would have been their so, only pitch to U Disc would have been like, "Hey, you're gonna have jobs." Yeah. So whereas, like, which might not be good enough for them. U Disc is a is a is a giant. I mean, they have one point some million active users yeah, on their app. People don't even realize how big Udisc people is. People use, and the thing is, like, Udisc Live wasn't one of their big, like, when they started Udisc, that wasn't, that was like almost a side project for yeah. them. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's huge and it affects us and, like, how we interact with the, like, live scoring and their product that they came up with, the Udisc team, was phenomenal. But, Udisc, it was never even one of their like core things at the bottom of the app to like go right. find Udisc live. Which you is, had to go seek I for it. Was a flaw. I always thought that was fascinating. Maybe too, they were, it, maybe that was writing on the wall. It speaks <laughs> to the core of Udisc, which is like we're here to provide like the course resources, this individual player stats. We're yeah. here for the common player, not for the Pro Tour. So Udisc didn't have the same like if you take the Pro Tour away from Jomez. They have nothing. Jomez has the putting game and stuff, but like yeah. they, they have nothing. Right. Co- like realistically, it would have been very hard for them to sustain. Mm-hmm. You take the Pro Tour away from UDisc, they still are UDisc. Like, yeah. You, you're everyone's fired up about it, but like the next time I go score at Peaks View Park, I'm still gonna pull my phone out well, and that, hit that UDisc yeah. app. That's just mm-hmm. it. And and I think um, what I'm most curious about is there's a lot of confusion uh, about the UDisc identity because we had so many people talking about how saying how the price just doubled, which it did, probably writing on the wall. Um, and they were like, how are we going to lose this main feature of Udisc Live when our price just doubled? That's been free. Yeah, that's always free. The whole time. So there are a lot of people who are confused about Udisc. Um, and I wonder how many people uh, impulsively deleted the app thinking that one of the, like, the only reason they were paying it was because they had the live scores. So I'd be curious to know that hit. Because beyond that, yeah, there shouldn't be a there shouldn't be a reason unless you were making that mistake. There shouldn't be a reason to delete U disk if you are, like I I mean I'm I get, would bet that that's less than ten percent of their users. Uh, yeah, I would like most people, people still use, use it for leagues. Yeah, for, it, it's a huge it's a huge app and it's very important. Um, and we we have nothing else like it. And if they doubled their revenue and lost ten percent of their people, they're doing just fine. Yeah, <laughs> so I I still think U disk um. And like their costs at the end of the day can't like it comes down to developing in their in their uh, servers and whatnot. Yeah. And they you know they seem like they've got their head on their shoulders. It's just a shame because ultimately, Udisc was and I've said this on the podcast before, but Udisc of all the products we have in disc golf, we have so many things that are unpolished, and Udisc felt like it was cutting edge all the time. It felt like if you were somebody who's new to disc golf and you showed them Udisc, they would instantly be impressed with like our sport be like wow look at this really well mm-hmm. built out app that does everything you need for disc golf it shows all the court like it's a phenomenal yeah app it really rocks and it and never has no f- issues it never goes down it's it's like uh, yeah the only flaw you disc ever had was volunteer scorekeeping and that's not even fair really so and now that um, problem's gone <laughs> yeah so um yeah i think you disc is going to be fine it's just going to be interesting to see. I mean, anyways, the, yeah, I, I was bringing all that up because what I think happened timeline wise is I think the Pro Tour PDGA, someone, probably the Pro Tour, tried to acquire UDisc or at least put the feeler out there. UDisc responds back with probably a number that was twenty like, million dollars. Realistically, it was probably north of ten million dollars if probably, I had to guess. Yeah, probably because technology companies can just be so profitable. Um, so some, something where pro tour is like, nah, that we can't do it. We just can't do it. Sorry. And like then the now you disc lives like, well, why are we going to continue working and building this? If the writing's on the wall, you want to bring it in house. And that conversation happens. Mm-hmm. Then I think the PDGA at that point acquires stat Mando. Yeah. Because if you think back on the off season, that was one of the things that was like a question mark of like, why, why? Why did the PDGA have any need for Stat Mando, right? Yeah. When we were looking at it, we even asked that question, I think, of like, why not just have your own stat guys? Like, it doesn't, that move in and of itself didn't make sense. If you add the context of we lost UDisc Live, we need someone who's already built out a statistics platform who has that expertise that can help us now make our live scoring system better, that acquisition makes sense. Which that acquisition, I believe, was basically just for jobs more or less from what I read online. It seems like it was basically just Statmando didn't really have a great way to monetize, but they had a really good product. PDGA was like, hey, 
you want to do what you're doing on the side full time and they're like sick done boom that's what it seems like to me the so long term i'm not worried about this move i think long term this move makes sense you is going to be fine the pro tour slash pdga gets live scoring in house and they'll own the statistics they'll own the data all of that makes sense they'll be able to license the data for if a betting service gets back into disc golf or a different betting service comes in they can license that data out a lot of moves that make sense going forward um the only downside is and it's a big one it seems as though it didn't it seems as though it's a little rushed to where they are saying like for the chess.com invitational or the um all-star weekend you're basically just going to have pdj live like you're there's not going to be any additional beta for chess.com we're basically going to we are going to be beta testers like us as the end consumer it's it seems like they're just going to have a like test product ready which right. sucks so it, they're going to be flamed for the first several events of the year probably yeah it, it's going to be sticky it's going to be like live coverage because the problem is it's not like this is a new thing if they had if they were just starting live scoring and we never had it before like this we wouldn't you'd be happy be with whatever happy you got it's existing right but we have had a really good polished product for a long time so i can almost guarantee you whatever we get is not going to be up to par with you disc no. and so there is they are going to get crapped on for it now luckily luckily the most important thing is that the scores come in timely and accurately and that the standings are easy to navigate if those things, if those boxes are checked, because ultimately what are most people who are keeping up with the UDISC scores, they just want to be able to click on. And to be fair, getting to UDISC live, you already had to go into the app, then go over to the tab, then go to UDISC live. Or you can um, just go to UDISC live. Or go to the website. So it wasn't the most streamlined thing. Well, this will probably um, just be a website. Yeah, for, for at least for the start. But um, the the most if people are able to at least go to this new scorekeeping app and the scores are there easy to read and they're updated on time that'll keep people at bay where people will get very heated is if the scores are delayed the servers are not working and then if that happens to the players and they say things about it that'll just get the people worked up even more because they listen to the players so mm -hmm. that is where because i think it's gonna look ugly from the start i'd be impre i'd be very impressed if there was any kind of interface because like when you think about eventually they'll get this thing right we'll probably have a really cool pro tour branded like um app that they'll figure things out and you know they have UDIS to look at what they did and kind of go from there but um it is going to be very imperative that at least it functions correctly in the most important ways because that'll keep people at bay um it just might not be as fun to look at well i mean the current pdj scoring app that you use as a player i say app um i don't know if they actually have an app but like the website, the website. you go to pj.com mm -hmm. slash score it works great yeah it's like it's not that bad it, the, i've used it as a TD, I've used it as a player, and I've also, as a TD, watched scores come in. It can take a while to update. And, well, I think a lot of that has to do with service, which it's these true. courses, they are already worried about service for live score, live it's stream. Because if, if, like, where we are, the good thing that the PDJ score app does, which UDISC did as well, is, like, if I send someone off at Independence Park and they go down that hill into cell service no man's land, mm -hmm. as soon as they pop back up, all the scores update. Yeah. So you might I might miss like two or three holes, but they pop right back in. Um, and they, other than that, if they're somewhere they have service, it's basically immediate. I can yeah. watch the scores roll in. That's already existed, and that app it works great. So and that's being used by tournaments all over the place. So server issue shouldn't matter hopefully not um because yeah, tournament building. size wise the pro tours are small player size wise compared to a lot of tournaments like the battle for yeah, bedford sure. we had live scoring going for hundreds of people at the same time like and that's on a weekend where you know so many other people are accessing the same website and it's all handling it fine building so, out the cosmetics of it is gonna take like things like player profiles well the, the tough part will be the, u disc we had things. where disc was on the fairway you yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, well, inside circle two after here's, one. Here's the biggest implication of this whole thing that I kind of just realized is they now have the power to change disc golf stat keeping forever. Yeah. They can change the stats. Like UDisc was keeping the stats because they decided that's what, it, what they wanted to keep. We we could effectively see the end of C1X. I hope so. Or like just like whatever think about all the stats they use some of them are pretty obviously going to stay but like we might not even have them anymore which is going to like like kind of throw off the course of disc golf history because there might be stats that were kept in the previous eight seasons that won't really be kept as closely 
from now indefinitely. So like we'll be like, oh, well, so-and-so's OB percentage. Be like, well, they only kept that back in the U-Disc era. <laughs> like it's a huge <laughs> thing. And it also, what are they going to have the volunteers keep is the other big one because it's like, are they going to have them mark down things more, uh, like even closer? What than What I would before? like to see is I would like them to, now that we're here, we're starting from ground zero, right? And UDISC was built in an era where volunteers were a lot, like, didn't exist nearly as much. The Pro Tour was way less established. So UDISC was, like, in an era where you had players keeping score for a lot, and you'd have, like, one or two volunteers with the main cards, and that was it. That was that. We're in a much different era of the sport now when this app's being built. I'd like them just to take a book out of golf's thing and just have have a guy who is the whole one stat keeper and you know or like have 18 volunteers one on each hole and it's just like oh this is the card that's on the hole and i'm watching their where their fairway shots land boom i'm watching him approach the green okay he is within 10 feet he you, you can even tap on i watched a dude at the pga tour event he had like an ipad that had just the green and yeah. he was sitting by the green and when a ball would land he would tap the location on the green that's so then one. it would update on my pga tour app and i could see where the guy had a putt from that would be the most like, like game changing that's what i if i was a p the pdga slash the pro tour that's what i'm trying to develop right now is like let's just have 18 volunteers one on each hole and then the very top cards can also have a guy follow that provides maybe the next level of stats but it, this will at least give you you know okay this dude this person landed within you know zero to, to ten feet 10 to 20 feet, 20 to 30 feet, 30 to, you know what I'm saying? Like also, d- different stats like that, that we, within U disc, you don't have, you have putt from C1X and you don't know if it was a 32 footer or right. a 15 footer. And those are two drastically different putts. I'd say another like thing they could do to make it easier for the volunteers is just instead of spray painting one circle, spray paint like a couple other like distance markers around the basket. So just not enough to maybe where it, ha- it doesn't have to be exact, but to give the volunteer an idea so we can be more yeah. precise. Hey, they just need to reach out to Shotlink, who does the PGA, and see if they'll do a collab. Shotlink, there you go. Shotlink times just have that camera. Up. <laughs> but no, I think the PDGA and the Pro Tour have a uh, opportunity here. You're gonna, your app's gonna get crapped on. Oh, it's gonna the be bad. first. Just accept, and it. I'll be right there with them if it's bad. Yeah, just accept <laughs> it. Like if you're the PDGA and the Pro Tour, I'm not even listening to feedback until we're proud of what we built. I like a good crowd with pitchforks. Um, Personally, that's why I think that's why I think they didn't know this was happening yet. Is because like, surely if they knew this, they would have been developing it last year into this year. And when Chess.com comes, it would have been ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact that it's not ready, if I'm the Pro Tour and PDJ, I'm like, you can listen to some like constructive feedback of like, man, I really wish this app had X, Y, or Z. But for the most part, your head's down until you build what you're proud of. And then you hear how people are responding because while you're still building it out, people are just everyone's gonna crap on it. Yeah. Because it's, it, we're used to U disc, so yeah. when it, if it's not up to the U disc standard, it, it's gonna wait. be crapped on. But I wouldn't I pay wait. attention to how U disc did things, right? Like I would be looking at other sports, primarily golf, because that's the easiest well, I'd one. I pay attention to a good bit of the things. But I'm just saying, did. don't get in a rut where you're like, we need to make remake U. No, you don't have to copy paste it. I would more so use it as a template of like, what are I, I'm sure that they've done this, but like, make the list of like, here's the things they provided, and then which ones do we want to have? Yeah, things, things like being able to go and check the Pro Tour schedule on the top and and the rankings. well, it's going to be on the Pro Tour site. There's surely going to be an app eventually. There's, I would hope so, but I'm just yeah. saying. It'll be on the Pro Tour site. The Pro Tour should just have an app in general. Anyways, yeah, the yeah. PGA Tour app, phenomenal. Because like you, when you're on the grounds and you pull up the PGA Tour app, you could look and just see where your each player was. You can see where you are on like the the course compared to yeah. where your favorite players. So like we, are. we could just pull crazy. it up and be like, <laughs> oh, you know, the leaders are on like hole six. Like we're here, and you can like see how to get to where you want to go. You can see the, you can like highlight bathrooms, food. Yeah, that yeah, app is crazy. crazy. Anyways, the that's DGPT crazy. should be building that app out already. There's also AR where you can see a shot tracer on your phone, yeah. and hold it up to the golf. I don't know if they're happening. gonna build up wow. that. <laughs> I don't know if they need to go that far. They need to do all this. I want Jomez yeah. follow what? flight. How does that work? That's <laughs> yeah, insane. dude. Because there's shot tracer. Well, have you seen AR using? for uh, like at FIFA built out at like the World Cup? 
and you could basically use your phone and like as long as you could see the field you could tap the player and it'd pop up stats what? about the player like their current speed all like their Everybody's how many about shots VR I, like VR that VR, is VR, insane dude. AR is what's AR is cool, incredible dude. yeah because yeah, then it's practical you just pull your phone out yeah. and like I can point it at Connor and click on him and get like get his, his date rate. of birth his social security <laughs> number and then boom I have his identity yeah that's what we need to be building <laughs> out game like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we worried about freaking Google Glass and Apple freaking Apple whatever Vision it is? Pro, man. Apple Vision Pro. Let's make Silas have to break 50 at New London for an Apple Vision Pro. Break 50? Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter was just getting ready to retort, and he was like, wait, he said 50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, the only other question I have with all of this, because like I said, it's going to be ugly for the Pro Tour. Udis is going to be oh, fine. Oh, it's going to be a dogfight. And yeah. then eventually it's going to be fine with the Pro Tour is what it is. It's kind of like when Apple comes out with a new charger. Everybody freaks out. Yeah, Eventually, and it's like if a year from now, we're all going to forget that that freaking wide thing is how you charge an iPad anyways. Yeah, freaking thing. Uh, <laughs> what does this do to the UDisc world rankings slash what is now the official world rankings is the, the next question. We have what an opportunity here Oh, for the grip lock ranking to take over. <laughs> okay. That's a good point. There's an opening. We should submit our like, this is our application right now to the Pro Tour. Not to the Pro Tour. To the general public. To the public. Do you, yeah, do you want the most cutting edge rankings out there? Then there, that's my, we have them. That's my pitch. Yeah, I wonder, is the Stat Mando, Stat Mando has a world ranking. Oh, thing. yeah, wait, why are we even asking this? It's going to be, be the, the Stat ranking? Mando ones. Yeah. <laughs> rankings. Which, let's just see. isn't there, a, isn't let's look there at an theirs. issue with the Stat Mando ones? Or are they, they the have best power ones? rankings and official rankings. So let's look at Stat Mando. Yeah, they're going to, they're definitely going to be. Stat Mando official rankings, 24 month. Power rankings are 15 week. What's their so let's look ranking? at official ranking no, MPO. An easy official what ranking. is it? I'm looking it up, man. Give me a what second. What is it, Hunt? Calvin Heimberg one, fine. Gannonber two, Isaac three, Simon, Ricky, and Eagle. Eagle is number one in the U disc. Eagle's number yeah. one in U. Honestly, this already is way better than the U disc one. And Paul is number three in the yeah. U-disc. Paul's That's ten. Big difference. Yeah. Paul's ten in. I think Stat I did Mando. like Stat Mando. Yeah, I think Stat Mando's fine. Stat but that's that's who's sense. definitely going to be Stat yeah. Mando. Where's Brody Smith? That's the true test. Here's. Um, ooh, ooh. Here's one thing. Not in the top 50. Also, mm. that I've noticed, it, or that's going to be interesting to notice, is the UDIS graphics. Brody Smith is 54th. I hate that, Mando. The, uh, the UDIS <laughs> Brody's graphics, not in the top 20. I don't agree. UDIS graphics on like the Pro Tour broadcast yeah. always looked so clean because everything they do is very polished. But the, the st- graphics weren't from UDIS. But even like we know from working with UDIS, the, the Pro Tour created yeah, the graphics and fed the information true, but like, from UDIS. Like Stat Mando's like font and their whole website. Stat and everything, Mando's web design. It's incredibly functional. Yeah, but it's like it's not there's no artist. Yeah, involved it's in. not enjoyable. I'm looking at it right yeah. now and I don't there's like no, it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like their logo, just their picture logo, is fine. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really make sense. But yeah, yeah, it's like I, a bar graph with the tree. Really, yeah, what's the name? Stat Mando. It doesn't even make sense. I don't I know what that guy means. About it. You can watch it at Trevor Stop Show. I'll have to watch the TSS. Um, but the, but like, I'd watch the TSS it, to get the DTL on the I, a, INFO. There you go. It needs clean What does DTL sure. stand for? I don't know. DTL? Sounded right. Um, Downtown low. <laughs> All time low. DTL. Diode transitor logic. That's what I meant. <laughs> People definitely say DTL. Don't I don't. They? I think it's a DL. Keep it on, on the, the DL. DL. Yeah, they don't say. I don't know. I don't know where the T keep it on the from. DL. Yeah, the down low. What does DTL stand for in accounting? Deferred tax liability. That's, That's what, what I was saying. About. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that yeah, Mando yeah. needs We're, to defer their tax let's liability. Let's just talk <laughs> about years. years, and then you just assume the smartest definition is what we meant. Yeah, yeah. 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 Deferred yeah. tax liability. Yeah, yeah. That's, what I, that's totally what I was talking about. Yeah. What is this Monday? Can't wait to collect on my DTL this week. It's like shows all the stats. Oh, all the stats from all the events in the past week. Yeah, that's fun. They got heck of stats. They have a lot of stats. Yeah, they just they need to they need to hop over into the CSS category a little bit more. Yeah, They're DTL. playing around HTML a little too much. Yeah, you get the CYC. Yeah, www. Yeah, They yeah, got to get some Java. Backslash HTTPS. Yeah. <laughs> all right, it's time for actually before the fan favorite segment. I need to remind you all. Hit me oh, with it, please. This Reminder. Thursday, this Thursday is our five year anniversary party live stream. I don't think we've actually told the company about it. I don't know hey, about Silas, this. Hey, Silas, man. By the way, Thursday, Same. live stream. Well, I, I kind of knew we were doing a live stream. I didn't know it was Thursday. Yes, you did. You picked the date. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. You picked it last week on, like, Friday or two I weeks ago. I uh, I don't know the time yet. 
Uh, pay attention to well, our okay, social I, media. I haven't missed out on anything yet because I don't know the time. Nobody knows. The no time one knows yet, the time. No one's missed out on anything. <laughs> Thursday live stream is our uh, our five year anniversary party. Our five year anniversary is actually Can like later in February. Yeah, uh, on my birthday. Yep, but T Stobbs expecting his second kid, so we got to move it up. So that's why it's coming right before that party, dude. Probably uh, February eighth. This week, we're, we have a bunch of discs we're releasing, some throwback stamps, all kinds of fun stuff. Can I stuff. bring a pinata? You can bring a pinata. We the can entire throw site's discs on. at a pinata. Oh, that's a great go. idea. Entire site's going to be on sale. It's going to be electric. You're not going to miss it. Again, that's this upcoming Thursday. Stay tuned to our social media for the official time Remind announcement. Remind me to buy a pinata on Wednesday. Stay tuned to social media for the official time announcement and all of that, and uh, we'll see you then. But time for a fan favorite segment, Heck Trevor's yeah, Trivia. Yeah. Trivia with Trevor. Trivia. I love a party. At least try, but Travis does I it better. I didn't do one this week. Travis I'm just kidding. Travis does it better. I'm just kidding. It's been a long time since we've done Price is Right. I'm it's bringing it back. It's been a long time. I got into my resonators. This is a difficult Price is Right. This is a difficult Price is Right. So oh. Price is Right rules remind the fans at home in case they don't the know. Price is Right. I went and searched um, discs on eBay. Yes, sir. And the I've bay. got the prices of them. And these are discs are that are right? sold. So they had actually sold for this price. They're not just listed. They have your sold. Um, so there's some kind of market value there. And these Boise boys, uh, sorry, Boise boys, are going to guess the price they think that disc is. And then whoever is closest. Is it closest without going over or just um, closest? We're going we're gonna to go old fashioned closest without going. Mm, I don't like the way you can. No, because I don't like the way you can play that and just be like, oh, I'm going to guess a dollar. We're going. Whoever is closest, doesn't matter if you go over or not, um, is the victor. And this time, we're, we're going to go point system, not... No, we'll go total value systems. That way, there's a time, chance for a comeback. So, okay. you're, we're gonna, it's going to be cumulative. Um, My middle I, name is Victor. I will tell you that the value um, range, nothing is going to be higher than $100. Okay. So that is why it's going to be tricky. There's not none of those crazy curveballs like, oh, that was $1,000. Good to know like Big Tress. The disc market is silly. All right. Let's go Big Tress. First item. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. First item. Um, brand new. Team Stamp Star Destroyer. It's a beautiful green color. Who's going first? Um, it's got like a mini Team Innova stamped. Connor, you go first. Fifty-five dollars. Give me twenty-nine. The price was one hundred. Wow! Oh, wow! Dollars. Good that, for that Innova. Makes that makes me happy. Are we yeah. back? Are we back? I was about to like. I, I had to talk myself down. I was just expecting it to be like twenty-five dollars, and I was going to throw up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that. I'm glad uh, I lost that round. Okay. Forty-five to seventy-one. I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, okay. On to the next one we have here. This is a P3X. His phone's right here. So I'm uh, blocking I it. Sorry. This is a P3X. You didn't do anything wrong. This is the Red Box exclusive from Dismania, the emerald colored Ironstone. Brand new. And it's my guess first? Yeah. Yep. $55. I was going to say $60, but I'll make it more interesting. And to You don't the, have to. No, I don't. It's early in the game. I'm saying $60. The price was... $35. Oh, oh dad gum. So okay. Hunt was 20 off. My dad just got gummed. <laughs> and Connor was 25 off. Putting him at 70 and Hunt at 91. And Closer than you one, might think. Next one is a brand new next. Big Con Shaman. We have an Elaine King first run Discraft Z Punisher pre flight number distance driver. Well, it's a Z <laughs> Punisher, so that, it's not as crazy. That's pre flight number. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> no, he just read the title. Yeah, I read the I'm title. not mad at him. No, dude, Connor. Yeah, tr Hunter, idiot. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah. I mean, this could be anywhere. <laughs> there could be one person out there. It's like, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's the best part about these. Like, it only takes one. I'm going to go $49. I'm thinking 25 The price is $40. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, the disc the disc market's kind of coming back. Yeah, it, it seems. I'm, Might be. I'm impressed. Uh, okay, puts Hunter. At I'm excited. Six. Connor Except for the the um, that is many disc wasn't that crazy. Next we have no, but that's good. Yeah, true. Because that means there people are valuing what should have value. That's which very is true. old stuff. Yeah. Well, let's see if they're valuing this one. Oh, oh boy, the 
Innova 2019 Sexton Tour Series Firebird Purple, brand new. 2019, though, that's they were mass produced at this point. They were overproduced. Give me $33. Hmm. You took a good number there, Big Hunt. Thank you. You uh, can take a better one. I could. A lot of numbers out there. I do. I just want to go sneak. It's it's not less than thirty five dollars. I will go fifty one dollars. The price was fifty four dollars. Oh, hang on. Connor is kind why, of why who who's buying this for fifty four dollars? Twenty nineteen. Like if you can probably about. find a retailer still has them in stock. Hit him with it. <laughs> you think? Um, no. This one's a little more interesting. We've got an MVP Simon Line Ooh. Electron Pixel Simon Lazat autographed. Oh, Pixel's not Ooh, out yet. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's Con's turn. Who's now, got it? Con's got we it. We know that historically. The, the best time for the prices to be up on discs in disc golf is for you to get it and flip it before it releases. Yeah. Sure. But it's got ink on it. That is true. Which in disc golf it's for some Simon reason, too, but though. it's got Simon ink though. I'm going to go to, we're not going higher than a honey. So I'm going to go with $73. And how, I think that's kind of How high. many rounds is there left? Um... I just need to know, like, I didn't want to pick smack. One, two, I've been in the three, middle like, this more after time. this. Oh, okay. Because uh, my head was at 80, but, like, I don't want to be that close to Connor if I'm trying to catch up. So I'll stick with 80. Price is 76. <laughs> What'd you hit? 73? Oh, 73. Yeah. Dang. He's so you still, still gained on me. Dude, I'm stomping right now. <laughs> Dude, Connor is going off right now. Okay. Next, we have a Discraft Jawbreaker Z Meteor Get Flippy Brody Smith Limited Edition. Brand new. Was it my guess first? Yes, sir. 25. 32. I was going to say 32 no matter what. The price is 38. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just slipping. Stumbling. <laughs> You're losing your grasp on the market, man. <laughs> That's good. It's good, though. Um, I'm happy because that <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well, because all of these prices make sense. Before, yeah. they didn't make sense. You're right. So, like, when That's you tell me point. all of them, I'm like, yeah, okay. This one is actually very, this is an interesting one. I'll be curious to see what you guess with this. Discmania S line swirl MD5 Ganon Burr team signing edition. Not signed, but it's like the, the bar signing. stamp ones they just did. They just they just came out with these. Yes. <sighs> did they re, did they do like a drop? Yeah, they dropped them on Discmania's site. Hmm. Hmm. $62. Okay. I feel like they retailed probably for like 30. So I'm going to go I'm going to go 40. Give me $40. The price is Give him $40. <laughs> give me $40 right now. The price is 37. Ah! All right. You still have a large lead. Great kind. fall. Cut into it though. But I was staying in the correct like what the, first the score now first is decibel. They were ugly. 147. These are the ones just like the the bar stamp yeah. on. Yeah, they were 147 for Big Hunt, 116 for Connor. Still have a pretty good lead with two to go. Yeah, but the there range is, of one to hundred is a couple, hard to a couple make tricky comeback. ones here to end. What I needed, what I needed ones. was like a twenty fifteen Sexton and Connor guessed like a hundred bucks, and I'm like two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's well, what I needed. Trevor said it was. I know. I know. Huh? Trevor says it. Uh, vintage. Trevor's never 2000 lied. Two thousand is in the year, I guess. That's considered. I've been to the year three thousand. That's vintage <laughs> now. We're vintage guys. Well, it's twenty four years ago. I know. Um, Innova first run Firebird. Ooh. Rare PFN brand new. Wow. So that's Pat you, Hunter, Ontario. <laughs> Just to me? Yes, sir. Yep. $95. Realistically, this, this should be worth more than $100. Think of all the Firebirds done for the game. This is the market might let me down here drastically. Yeah, I think I'm going to go lower. I don't believe in it, but I'm going to do it. It's going to be. $83. The price is $100. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good for the okay. market. Okay. okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. With one to play. I'm That's not gonna, for the market. Those okay. Claps. I'm not going to tell you the exact lead, but it is, it is, you can overcome it because well, I don't, yeah, want, I don't want him to math you. I um, and I'm going first too, so very, I can't just choose something. Yeah, Khan's going first. That is. So can I math him or you no, don't, you don't want any math? I don't want any mathing. Rare. $50. Out of production. 
Turbo Putt by Quest Technologies, Disc Golf, Pink and Purple, new. It's a brand new out of production Turbo Putt. Pink and Purple? Pink Purple is the color. Okay, it's so there's one. one. There is one. That would have been crazy. <laughs> Pranked ya. <laughs> audio podcast <laughs> we're talking we're still here <laughs> speak 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 uh talk. everything online 44 dollars okay yeah i feel like it's, i feel like it's a close range i'll go 32 it's 75 bucks oh we just bought one i bought years ago. i bought a pack of two like years last ago. year two years ago like 38 maybe they didn't maybe they just there went out of production it, this I, thing sold somebody I, bought it can we say that we are the reason that went up to 70 yes, dollars so we've used it in videos i think we're there the reason go. He's for the season, it. yeah, you had, had a chance at the end, but that was unsuspecting. Yeah, I was, I was not. I thought you were. I was go, not guessing about forty for that. Yeah, I thought Carmen was gonna go way lower on the Firebird. I thought he was gonna get in like the fifty range because I was surprised it went for a hundred. Sometimes those Innova mm. ones can be. Deceptive. That's what I'm saying. Old Innova, it's making a little comeback. Yeah, that's our happy is that's back. Great. The most that expensive mad things money we show you were just Innova. talking about there today. It's funny. I just saw a clip on my phone of it. It's still going. Kramer, Jim Kramer, Big Con's got it. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. <laughs> Let me see if I can find his butt. I, if disc golf betting ever becomes a thing, we're doing Hunter's Mad Money because I want him to just do that. Bye bye bye. <laughs> I just, y'all gotta hear it. In my head, that was like spitting image. Okay, I just oh, want the remix. button. I just want the button. <laughs> Somebody made a remix. Let's just see if this is it. It's a remix. Ah. Uh, There's so many other stories out there. Gasly, Jack in the Box is the best of the bunch, but you gotta wait for bye bye. I've been straight up. Denny's goes higher. I would not sell Denny's. Call me a bye 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 of that chain. Right, that's pretty close. Bye bye bye. Yeah, I want a little higher. A little bye, higher. Bye bye bye. bye. That's it. There you go. Bye bye bye. <laughs> Our prices have never been lower. <laughs> that's fun. That is fun. I had fun. I would like a soundboard. I think. Okay. I, want, yeah. I think I want one right back here. I think we'd get carried away. Where we can just hit like, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I think that people would get sick of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Connor, that. you can just be our soundboard. Yes, sir. Show on Parks and Rec or whatever. Whatever. The douche and whatever the other guy is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, they have like fart sounds. <laughs> uh, so Jeremy Rusco, we announced last week, you know, there was the whole article where he had bought oh, the Emporia Country he's, Club. His name is Money Rusco now. Money Rusco. Yeah, money, Rusko. Um, <laughs> so, the he had a press conference, basically answering a lot of questions. The Emporia Gazette has now rewrote an update. I think he's actually going to be on the podcast that shall not be named. It's also on our network. That's mm. losing to Grip Lock merch now. <laughs> oh, look at this our audience! Thank you, you know guys. what this? Thank you know you. what this hoodie is called? It's called Dark Chocolate, and I just got it, and it's awesome. It tastes yeah. delicious. Woo. We've officially taken a lead. Uh, Salas, oh, we didn't even get on him this morning about that. We yeah. took the lead, Salas. How do so, you feel about but that? But I, I believe Rusko is going to be on the so other podcast, the other one, the one that you know is hosted by Brody Smith and Paul Ulibarri and is yeah. losing to us three goons. Uh-huh. Uh, that one. <laughs> I think Russell's going to be on it. So if you want to hear more information, you can check that out. Uh, it's Tour Live But they even show up for yeah. it. I just, yeah. I it's just, also on Foundations Network, so I should probably promote it. Oh, but you should you should go buy Griplock merch and, and wear should, it while you're watching and you it. Should, you should... You should post a picture of you wearing grip lock merch, merch while yes. watching tour Life. oh please tag foundation and stories of you wearing grip lock merch while watching the enemy's podcast that would be great of tour life will yeah, we share it will we repost it yeah yeah well not we all of them well but if you if you look really happy in it <laughs> somebody <laughs> tweeted us where the heck did caroline henderson go pdj status is expired and no longer on the prodigy team oh dang she stopped playing i think last she year just quit i think she got injured and just never came back that's crazy so i don't know I never forget. I had her first interview. Drug yeah. Shop show. Bright, bright career. A lot uh, of promise there. Back to this. <laughs> Jeremy Rusco uh, and bought the. It was actually Emporia Community Club, apparently. Yeah, non Emporia Country I need Club. To take something. I That's need to take interesting because that we've been calling it that for a long time. I've it. always called it called it the Emporia Country Club. It's apparently the Emporia Community Club. Is that what it was called. That sounds like what they renamed it to after, because like their whole everybody in Emporia seems to like not like the idea that this country club existed. And like there was only a few people that could afford it and look down on the rest of the people. So they probably renamed it to Community Club to make it sound like it was like maybe I don't know everybody in. So the purchase was made under the banner of Dynamic Brewing Company. um, And he announced the impending name change uh, of the four. four, Okay, now it's called a country club here. The former Emporia Country Club into Champions Landing. So So I think it was probably Country Club. Then the investor group bought it, changed it to Community Club. Then Rusco bought it and is now Champions Landing. Champions Landing. Wait, Champions Landing 
an Eagles crossing. Okay, I thought it was Eagles landing for a second. It's not. There's rich, 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 rich history of a lot of city golf champions being crowned and then obviously the last decade the disc golf world champions that have been crowned rusco told the gazette i think the name is very fitting um what's notably missing cool from name. the new moniker is the word club with rush which rusco said implied the need for a membership in order to use the facilities i think it's really important that the club was removed from the name to remove that country club stigma that you have to be a member of the club to go on property and premises those sorts of things I like that um so he basically, Rusco sees this as a Midwest tourism and entertainment destination for a variety of recreational offerings, including golf, disc golf, pickleball, cornhole, basketball, volleyball, craft beer, arts, and music. Champions Landing will solidify Emporia as the disc golf capital of the world and disc golf destination for decades to come. The expansion and utilization of the multi-sports complex will attract a wide variety of sporting events to the facility and to the city of Emporia, making a significant economic impact on the overall quality of life for Emporia. <laughs> I'll so tell you, does dynamic brewing have anything to do with dynamic discs? I don't think so. No, okay. I will say the... Um, he founded both, so he just likes the word dynamic. I think. Okay. Yeah, the... Um, man, that buyout was good to our boy, Jer Bear, because he is... This is ambitious. Well, the title of this, it says, it, this is a passion prog project. It does say that, which, which, which he, implies that he would just he chuck has it. it some, I forget where that, uh, where that quote is at the end. While it's not an overnight decision, I'm excited about the opportunity to keep the Emporia Community Club bringing in improvements and making it more accessible to the community. This is a passion project of mine, and I'm encouraged by the community support from those who have heard about it hey, so far, which is quite a few. And here's what I'll say to, to, to Jeremy, listener of the show, probably doesn't listen to Tour Life, didn't even, doesn't even know what it is. Um, <laughs> That's, that's if, why he's going on. If you're, no idea if you're well <laughs> off and you're just like, you know what? Maybe this won't be profitable or at least not right away, but I want to make this awesome thing for this community because I love Emporia and like this is my home. That's awesome. Yeah. Like good for you. And what I'll also say is whenever it's done, you know who to call. We're going out. I mean, we got it. We got it. We're going to have to check out Ruscotopia whenever this place yeah. is done. Like, yeah. Because I've, I've, I've I, I will say before, like I wasn't motivated to go to Emporia just for ECC, the but for this thing, I'll go check it out. Well, the um, I don't think the Emporia Country Club course disc golf side was open all the time, whereas this course will be yeah. open um, a lot more. Uh, you said we're definitely going to have an emphasis on disc golf. Two things that are not are going to not only improve our events at the highest level, like the World Championships and DDO, is to make improvements to keep up with the highest level disc golf events, but I also want to make sure there'll be more of an everyday beginner level experience out there as well. Cool. So, yeah, Love that's that. basically the, the future of the Champions Landing, formerly Emporia Community Club, formerly Emporia Country Club, formerly home of the Glass Blown Open. They should put in like an insane <laughs> clubhouse for the ECC uh, disc like, golf team. Oh, like the, Empor the Emporia, Emporia State. State. Imagine like the recruiting ability you'd have if like it's like the football teams that put in their locker rooms. Like you, like they Rusco builds on that property like the most insane locker room. Everybody would want to go play disc golf in Emporia State. So I mean, we had a locker room. We did. It was, well, I didn't get to experience it. It <laughs> was trailer. after my senior year. Yeah, it was dope. I got to I got to <laughs> like, like after nationals. I got to walk from in. Campus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after nationals, I got to walk in and. I was like, sick. Yeah, you didn't miss out because nobody used it. Because yeah. we didn't go over there. We yeah. didn't hang out. Over well, there. also, that's I not went even there twice. Both times, the coach told us to meet there. That's yeah. also not even where you park to play. No, no. That it, was the tough part. Zero if utility. Was, if it was at East Campus's course, yeah, we, like we, they put you, it in we would have hung out there before practice. Yeah. Sure. Or if it was at the parking lot of Camp Hideaway, yeah, like yeah, would have kept our stuff there. That's a sure. coach was like, you can store your bag, your clothes. I'm like, why would do that? But then I had to go so far out of my way to get it. And the only way it would have had utilities if we would have decided to practice like over in that field which wasn't big enough so yeah and then during the summer they just used it for uh this is just crapping on liberty's <laughs> locker room camp but counselors during the summer in. camp counselors slept in our locker room so like, you couldn't <laughs> i lived here all year obviously i'm from here sick and like room. if i wanted to go into the locker room i couldn't during the summer because there was Dead like in there teens sleeping in there <laughs> i was like dang dude. side rant side rant anyways yeah emporia state hopefully y'all have a locker emporia room state fans now Stingers up, baby. Stingers up, uh, dude. <laughs> no, I became an Emporia State fan when at Nationals last year, The one of the dads of, I think it was Cade's dad. Dude, he had all those uh, hand, hand warmer. warmers Yeah, one of them brought, up, brought me a hand warmer. Mm. Saved my dude, life. speaking of Cade, did you see that video Emac posted of him going into that yeah, frozen good for lake? Him. He's literally breaking up the ice as he's swimming out to, to get, get his, his disc. disc. Grit what? play of the year. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, go to Emac's uh, Instagram account. He's like literally freestyling and breaking thin ice to get to his dick. That's, yeah, that's how you prep for national. That's tough. David. That's David Goggins stuff. He wants it stuff. bad. He wants yeah. it bad after last year's heartbreak. No, he don't have to bring that up. I knew you were going to bring it up, man. They don't have to go back through that. 
We'll, hopefully we'll be at uh, East State. Go hopefully Hornets. we'll be <laughs> at nationals again. If you're a collegiate disc golf player or fan, it's at Winthrop this year, and uh, hopefully we'll be back down there. Oh, that's excited. a good point. All right, what we're gonna do now to wrap the show out is our two early season predictions. So I have here listed every Pro Tour event minus the European events and silver events, so the real Pro Tour events, and that's my new thing. Actually, that's a lot harder. European silver events, I know, don't count. Uh-huh. European events, we're going to see what the field does. That'll be an interesting one. Because, like, if... A lot if, up in the air, man. If, like, the top 10 guys all go air. to Europe, then there could be some fraud Schedules events Schedules just aren't really coming out this year like they usually do. I've seen, like, two. Two yeah. or three. Guys are getting cagey. I don't <laughs> like it. Yeah. Uh, I did see that Ezra Aderhold remembered to register for Champions Cup. Good, good for that him. That was good. I'm yep. surprised um, he could. He's in like 12 different time zones at any mm, given day. Yeah, he's back. I think he's back in the U.S. Gosh, now. Gosh, dude. He's back after his Bali and I don't even know where yeah, all he went. He's been a fun follow the last few weeks. He's been yeah, a fun follow. Yeah, it's been something. Yeah, for me personally. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're just going to predict the winner of each of these. And then I'm going to just like keep a little check mark. Tell him why we're not doing FPO. Oh, but because if we did FPO, we would all pick Kristen. Because like statistically, if you pick Kristen to win every event, you're gonna win. You're probably gonna be right more than fifty percent of the time. So uh-huh. that's why we're not doing. So that would be boring because like if you want points. Well, really, okay, actually, it would just be let's do it for FBO. Board. We just we have to pick how many wins does Kristen have? Whoever's closest. At the end, okay, yeah. I'll I'll add a Kristen yeah. win total. Because realistically, that's the actual difference. How many events are there? We'll count them. Okay, okay. So starting off with the Chess.com Invitational down in Florida. The he's, he's winning it. This is at the historic Throw Down the Mountain this course, now Olympus, one. owned by Paul McBeth. Mm, Just I'm, had their grand opening recently. I, I am think, taking too. Calvin, home state. He's been probably been out there to the course. Paul is injured, therefore, because mm-hmm. like he would probably be the other name that pop in your head. Yeah, I know. I like Calvin just because Calvin's had success at Throw Down the Mountain before, mm-hmm. and like obviously there's been changes to this course, but I was going to take Calvin as well. I'm taking Gannon, the Cannon Burr. Okay, Gannon for Gannon Con. Open up. Waco. This is always Waco a, is wacko. This is always a crazy one. Yeah, I'm gonna random people win this all the time. I am gonna take Cole Radolin. Oh, I like that, Trev. Going with the C's to start. I'm going with Simon Lazat. Okay, I think he gets a, a win early. He's gonna miss. He plays the first part of the season, then he disappears, then he comes back. Hopefully, Waco is not when he disappears. I'd go. have to look at his schedule to remember when he's going. I'm going. Yeah, I might have just lost that one, but that's okay. That's why I'm this go- is way too early season predictions. Yeah, my absolute favorite player of all time. Love his personality. He's electric. Anthony Barella. Wow. Like Connor. That, that's a good pick. Thank you. That's a good pick. I'm going to just write Anthony, so then when that happens, I won't remember. I'm actually going to look at the Simon message he sent me. Uh, that was just to flex at Simon message yeah, me. Oh, no, because um, he told me. I like said something on Grip Locked, and then he messaged. Was it me or was it Foundation? Oh my gosh! I just to explain oh, himself. So I just got the reminder on my phone that I set literally months ago to oh, do that. Oh, yeah. he's playing Super Bowl everything oh. up to Nashville, and then he's taking like after Music City off for a little bit. I so just got I just got the reminder I set months ago that I'm so excited about to do that post where I was going. I thought about this. Bags. You can still do it. It's ruined. No, it's, it's not. The same color. You can't go red red. Got to go what red yellow? Yeah, it's, it's red, gonna look red, like gold. Just, yeah, yeah, it's I'm not gonna same. work. It's ruined. Yeah, I knew it. Ruined. I knew it, was, it could happen, guys. I wanted to do this post on Instagram where I'd make two disc golf bags of the Super Bowl colored themes and just post it. And I thought it was gonna be so fun, but literally the worst case scenario happened where like the teams have basically the same colors to where it just wouldn't look good. Like if I did, because like if I if it would have been red and purple or you know any of the combinations that could have happened, um, it would have been awesome, but. I mean, worst case scenario is we would have all gotten killed by a meteorite. Good point. Good point. You could go. We do have some gold shimmer star wraiths Just in stock. Do all gold. You can go red, red and gold, and like a red deeper and red, and then a brighter red, yellow, and white for the Chiefs. That's a good point. Maybe you I'll give it a try. I think you still try. I'll give it a try on Friday. Um, I'll try. Go over there. Open it, Austin. I'll give it a try. He's giving it a try. <laughs> Open it, Austin. Okay. I'm oh, gonna- we do. Side note. I don't think anyone's going to change their answer. Waco <laughs> does introduce a second course this year. Okay. More um, open course. It's still even more wacko. Yeah. I'm taking um, Gannon Bird a repeat at Austin this year because nobody else seemed to like that course. <laughs> and he he won and he got the cowboy hat. Maybe he'll wear it this year. You never know. Man, open in Austin. Yeah, that is an interesting one. I'm going Isaac Robinson. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> open in Austin. Give me Rick. Give yes, Rick. sir. Texas Rick. Texas Rick. Texas States. That's where I want Rick. 
Ricky for Trev. Was that six time, five time Texas yeah, State winner? He wins a lot. He dominates that tournament. It, there, it is so hard to win events back to back on tour, but Rick, with that Texas State event, he does it. Hmm. What did, I'm trying to think through that course. Are they changing the course this year? They're changing. I think they moved Texas States this year. Uh, yeah. I, I don't th- know if it's at Dogwood anymore. I think they did move it. So they're moving it. Dogwood was just a high. random one. You know what? What? Give me Mr. Texas. Oh, Emerson Daddy. Keith, give it to me. I feel it. I feel it. He's Love in it. Texas, little home state, Ooh. back with Innova. It's a big Ooh. home state. A big home state. Big home yeah. state. Little man, big home state. Little man, big state. A lot of power though. A lot of power though. I like him with Innova. I think he's going to have a little more success with Innova. Dude, you're this year. a dirty dog for that. You are dirty. Con. Are we on a different one now? Texas States. Oh, uh, I'm going with the Oppenheimberg, Calvin. <laughs> Oppenheimberg, that's funny. Thanks, man. Calvin, baby. Jonesboro Open. I want Calvin here. Um, give me Eagle. Ooh, oh. see, I don't know when Eagle's coming back. I think this is when he comes back. I know he's coming back of somewhere in here. This is the beauty of this. Don? I'm going to go with Mr. Lazat. Simon. Simon. Music City. I want Simon here. Trevor went Simon. Mm, this is, no, this no, no, no. Cross it. I want AB. I'm going to take AB here. This is uh, Simon's last event before yeah. he takes some time off. Give me, give me, mm. give me C Dick. Give me Chris. <laughs> yes, sir. I want Chris. <laughs> I think he it, it makes me it. like it more that it's Simon's last event. Yeah, he's he did gonna, win it last year. He's just going to ball. He could out. go back. I to back. thought about I'm going, going back Simon. to back there. I legitimately I'm going thought Simon. about doing. I think you, you gonna, said Simon. I wrote S, and then you made me no, cross I, it I out. I thought about it's taking gonna be it his the last, last event for a while. I think that he's going to be so playful. That's a totally reasonable pick. Here's the thing, guys. All these picks so far, reasonable picks. <laughs> <laughs> All beauty. right, Champions Cup at Northwoods Black. I want Rick. Trevor wants Rick. I want Ganone. Connor wants Gannon. Dude, Connor's on the Gannon train. I want Isaac. I've only picked Gannon twice. I, I like. I know we're at <laughs> twice. Him, I know we're at a different course, <laughs> but I still like Isaac Robinson up there. I respect that. I like okay. that. All right, dynamic discs open. DDO, if you will. Yeah, I will. If you will, if you may. Give me Rick here. I want Aaron Gossage. I like that pick. Revenge. I want Kyle's Klein. Great pick. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, can it's I? You know like, what? I'm gonna give you a good pick, and I'm gonna give Trevor the great pick. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd already used good, so I had to give it a different. It's almost dude. like I have the top twenty open on my phone and looking at is it. Is anybody <laughs> even gonna be at this next event? OTB Open. This is now we're in the like Europe back to America. Europe yeah. back to America. Most people will be at Portland, I feel like, but OTB is OT. I have no idea. Who's only be at this the event. best. Like I legitimately, I feel like anybody I guess is not gonna be there. Probably. Uh, Emerson Keith won this last year. Him or daddy? <sighs> this Ezra, be, this Ezra, Ezra, me, Ezra for, for Trev. Give he, me, I don't know if he'll be there or not. He probably has his schedule out. Give actually. me Corey Ellis. Corey Ellis. Great pick, Con. Thanks, man. Way to <laughs> dig in there. Um, <laughs> ah! Who do I want? Give me Gary Gurthy, double G. <laughs> Hey, all of these picks are good I'm so far, double G, turkey, t- <laughs> double, double G turkey tattoo on my head, dude. He, this is where he choked double it away G that one turkey. year, right? Or was that Portland? That was Portland. Ah, double right G turkey. I'm going to make a new company called Double T Turkey. <laughs> I like I like Double G. Give it to me. That's funny. That is I funny. got a lot of tweets And Hunter today. could eat it. Portland. Uh-huh. And Hunter could eat yeah, it. Yeah, turkey. Portland? Dude, Portland G. open now. Easy for me. Easy for me. Good, Trev. Easy for me, Eagle McMahon. Yeah, I want Eagle. He's be well. back and ready and ready to go. Trevor, come on. Yeah, dude, what the frick what are you doing? Just copying you're stealing them? You're yeah, copying dude, you're them? Just on the Eagle train. Trevor's on the Eagle train. I'm on the Eagle train. You know, just give me Eagle. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Can't lose a point if you join them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, just Beaver State Fling. Golden voided it. Oh, Beavers. Beaver State Fling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wait, I give me Nate Sexton. You're ridiculous. Why is that? I don't know. It's his home state, home courses. Sick. Okay. BSF, give it to me. Beaver State Fling. <laughs> hum, 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 Rika. Hum. Um, I like Calvin Heimberg there. It's a good pick, Con. Good pick, Con. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't had a bad pick. It's mm. almost like all the people I've chosen are pretty decent disc golfers. <laughs> Man, this is tough for me. This is a tough one. Think about you don't like Beaver Nate Sext? No, I don't. 
I don't like Nate Sex for that course. Um, it's, it's home, man. I yeah. think the redemption arc. Yeah, just that's like his home. He's like, I, Welcome I back. feel like a disturbance Nate. in the force here. I feel like there's something weird's gonna happen here. Yes. Somebody okay. weird's gonna win. I Give like me that. Ezra Robinson. Ooh, sneaky. Wins before his brother. Ah! No, Sorry, I already have me. Isaac already no, won Champions Cup on my scared list. Me. That scared me. That's scared me, Um, Why did I put the Turku Hunter, if you here. get every single one of these right, I will give you $5 billion. Okay. Hunter, Imagine you get, if you parlayed this. Like, if you parlayed every winner, the odds would be like... I can't even comment. Hunter, if you though. get all this right, I'll get your face tattooed over my face. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Preserve <laughs> Championship. like four weeks in. <laughs> yeah. If I start off hot, y'all could owe me a lot. Um, the preserve championships is Simon back for the preserve? Probably, yeah. We've we've missed a lot of events. I don't like these probabilities. That's five weeks after five events after he's definitely uh, back. Simon's a dirty dog. He's planning to take about a month off. He said he's a dirty dog. Yeah, so. I think Simon's back for the preserve. Don't just say that. Let me look. It's literally right here in front of me. He's not. So thanks for pranking. Oh, just he, he is. He is. It's the first one back. Say he DM'd it. me. First one back. So. I'm going to really, oh, his, you, his public DM Instagram Silas? post. Did, Silas, did you DM Silas Lazat? <laughs> yeah, I DM Silas Lazat. I'm going with... I want Simon. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm going with Matthew Orem. That's a good pick. I forgot he existed. Not going to lie. <laughs> He's not going to win. Uh, give me Calvin. I haven't picked He's Calvin in a while. Pony. Dude, Hunter's on the Calvin train right now. Des Moines. <laughs> Desmonez. Give me oh, Gannon here. Easy. Oh, dang it, Hunter. I Actually, haven't picked Gannon I yet this year. Isaac. Oh, you guys are just... You guys are just taking all of them. There's Tom? no more left now. All right, I'll go with... I like... I'm also going with uh, with Isaac. Oh. That's the first one that I've repeated of you guys, okay? It's not true. Eagle. Um, you <laughs> <laughs> European Open. Paul McBeth. Trevor takes P. Ooh. McBee. Ooh. 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 Uh, I'm going to take Ricky. I'm taking Nick. Remember, they're playing Antela. two courses here. Oh, that's actually a very good pick. Thank you, Trevor. Nicholas yeah. I like, good pick. That. I like that. Ledgestone. <laughs> Ledgestone. I want Gannon. Trav Dog wants Gan Dog. Ledgestone. I feel like someone random could win here. Give me a. Give me a, a tricky Chris Dickerson. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, we made the whole argument about Kristen, but, like, technically, if you took Calvin or Rick in every event, you probably have a better shot than somebody who tries to take a different person in every event. Yeah. Well, but if you go Calvin, Rick, Calvin, Rick, like, you might have, you might get off the cycle. Yeah. And it's Rick, Calvin, Rick, Calvin. Don't <laughs> get off the cycle. Yeah, it's harder when there's multiple players. I'll, I'll take Ricky. Because, like, I'm not actually picking him to go back-to-back. -back. I just think he could win one of those two events. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's how you had to think yeah. of it. That's what you got yeah, to think okay. Of it. Idle Wild. I want Isaac. Idle. Trap Dog wants Isaac. Idle Wild. The Idle Wild. Give me Kyle Klein. Give me Idle Wild. Uh, Feel the burn with Ganon. I'm on the Ganon train right now. Do you guys hear that? Chugga Chugga. Worlds. Point. World Championships. Paul. And Lynchburg. Trevor thinks Paul McBeth. Two majors. Mm -hmm. Two majors. Yeah, I think he wins one of the two. I'm going. I'm going for it here. Because you know we'll we'll ride that Paul McBeth major fallacy thing in Ricky Wysocki. We'll ride it. I'm taking up. Ricky. Ricky. I'll ride Wysocki. it straight to the grave. I should say nobody else is. I'm riding. I'm taking. <laughs> I like. I've got, I've got one more year I of the like, Paul McBeth Worlds thing only because literally only because it's at his like home course. If it were anywhere else, I'd be done with the whole thing. I only Beth like World Ricky. Thing. If he was only at New London, give me Paul any day of the week. But honestly, Simon Lazat could be a very sleepy pick here. That's not he, even sleepy. He, he's not going to be there, though. He, is he tore. Yeah, he's back. He, is, okay. he tore New London up when he was in town. Yeah, yeah I was um, I was wondering him, but I didn't But I chose, I chose Rick only because you're only playing New London twice. Ricky's going to do just fine at New London, but I really like Rick at, at uh, Ivy Hill. Yeah. Guys, Intel. I can't remember who's better, Evan Scott or Evan Smith. Smith, I think. Here we are again. I think Evan Smith's better. Connor, who's winning Worlds? <sighs> it's. Be I'll go. I'll Ow. go with. I'll go. I'll go with Calvin. Ooh, first major, big Cal. Yeah, that might as well just burn that money up, dude. He's not gonna win a major. Yeah, Calvin. I could see him being doing well at New London. 
D Glow. Can't win majors, you know that. D Glow, give me Simon Lazat. Give me Simon Lazat. Give me Simon Manila Manila. You want Simon? No, I want um Calvin. Calvin for Trev. Con. D Glow, I want Bert Kreischer. Dude, yeah. <laughs> give me in the bird zone real quick. Bradley Williams. Oh wow. I'm not gonna say good pick on that one. That's fine. I like that you threw out. I like that you chose him. Yeah, I just. I like him. I like Bradley Williams. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think D Glow lines up super well for him. I don't think. Man, I'm just going Green Mountain Championship. Green Mountain GMC, if you will. Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount Championship. I'm gonna take Matty O here. No, you're wrong. It's the Goose Man. I want Dickerson. (laughs) MVP Open. Mm. We are in the. Did they do in the playoffs this year? Yeah, I think so. So we're in the playoffs. Cuts could have happened. Simon is hot. Simon as well. Ooh, Simon. I chose him first. You lose, Trevor. Simon. Not to you. Can't lose to you. We put the same player. If I, I am enough. going to choose Isaac Robinson. Oh. USDGC. Isaac. Give me Eagle McMahon. You can have him. I am... You guys are going to be so sad this year whenever Matty O whips y'all's high knees at USDGC. I would hope you'd be able to beat us at that course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Tour Championship. Good luck guessing that one. Huh? Chore. Who'd you guess, Con? Chore. <laughs> Michael Jort? Um, I'm going with Gannon Burr. I'm going with Alden Harris. Like it. All right. Who do we think is the Pro Tour points champion at the end of the year? Um, Calvin Heimberg. Rick. I think Calvin. I think he's going to be consistent again, but I don't think he's going to win a bunch. All right. Now, what do we think is Kristen's win total? Uh, This is just for these events. Or do we think, yeah, just these events. We have yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 events. 23, though, because they have an extra major. 15. 15 for Con. Ca- so we're counting throw pink, though, because you counted USDGC. Oh, okay, so no. So it's just 22. 22. That 15, your answer? 15 still. 15? 15 wins for Con. I think she wins half of them. I'm going to go 11. I'm going to take eight. Eight for Trev. You forget that she's going to be driving a Porsche. No, nope, not, not in the US. US. She will still be driving it at some point. Well, yeah, maybe. Just not while she's in the it's US. Not in the US. She'll she was looking about it, though. She was looking for US <laughs> dealership connections on her Instagram. I did oh, see that. Well, maybe yeah, you guys forget she's going to have Porsche on her shirt. That it's going to be true. heavy, but it's going to be there. All right. Hopefully that was entertaining to listen to um, because we did it and you listened. Uh, Thank you all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the live stream Thursday night and it's time for the Silas Selects. Guesses, guesses, boys, guesses. This one's an easy one. Really easy one here. Really easy one here. I want a a dagger. Dagger? (laughs) This is a test run for Trevor because on Friday, if he guesses the disc right, he has to get a tattoo. If me or Jacob get it right. Yeah. True. Man, I forgot I did that. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Mine is going to be a streamlined jet. I want an MD3. Well, yeah, streamlined but what do you jet, think the disc is? MD3 and a dagger. Dagger. Ah, oh, zombie. It's a zombie. We weren't even close. Uh, zombie. zombie. I just saw pink and made me think of old pink. I really need that to happen on Friday. Zombie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I forgot I was doing that. And, Although, their, really? tanks, and their guns and their bombs and the their Jacob's guns. Guess matters because I'm going to guess something that's never been. Oh, I guess it has to be on the website. Never mind. All right, ladies and gents. See you next week.